All right, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Know It Owls channel. And in this episode, I am going to talk about what is impermanent gain. See, we always hear about impermanent loss and how to control it or how to manage around it, make sure you're rebalancing to minimize impermanent loss. But what if you took it a step further and created an impermanent gain? So that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, not many people talk about it. More so, not many understand how to do it or even know that they're doing it, right? So I like to take this approach and I'm going to show you a real live trade example of where I took on impermanent gain. Now, impermanent loss is usually met with negativity or it's put in that category as a, as a negative thing, right? Impermanent loss. But uh, just want to note here that impermanent loss isn't actually a bad thing. It can be a way to mitigate risk, right? So when we look at it, what is impermanent gain? Think of it as pretty much the opposite. It's where you can generate a profit on your liquidity pool based on your rebalancing process on how what your process is when you rebalance your liquidity pools now you're probably wondering okay so how do i do this well i'm going to show you an example of something of a trade that i have personally done and have documented within our school platform if you're interested in checking out our school platform check out the links below you can sign up for a quick strategy session uh, where we can discuss one-on-one -on -one and see if it's a right fit for you. All right. So in this thread that I have here, it's one complete trade that's been going on since March, but I'm going to take an excerpt from this thread where I took on a trade to create an impermanent gain. Okay. So this is an Ethereum USDC thread that I post in our school platform. And here I'm talking about how I set up a liquidity pool based on a specific scenario, right? So this is an entire trade that, that has been ongoing since March, multiple rebalances, but I'm gonna take an excerpt from here where I took a, a separate trade within this trade to generate extra yield. So in this scenario at 35.40, I switched to 100% Ethereum in my liquidity pool and I took that Ethereum I unstaked it from the liquidity pool and I lent it to Ave. And what I did was I borrowed against it. Now I'm going to go over the scenario here on why I did that. It has nothing to do with the impermanent gain. You don't have to borrow or lend your assets to do this, right? It's just for this particular trade, that's what I did, right? And I'll show you on the liquidity pool side on how I had a gain, right? An impermanent gain. So we're going to go over here. I started this, I like to call it like a side quest, right? On June 24th, I set up this liquidity pool where I borrowed against it. So what I did here, I didn't know where price was going to go, right? And it was I was kind of like, eh, it's 50-50. We could easily break out above here. And if we did that, and if I was in a tight liquidity pool with only my assets, not borrowed assets, I would take on a ton of impermanent loss. Because for context here, I set up a USDC heavy liquidity pool to like buy the dip and at 3540 I swapped to 100% Ethereum to lock in any potential or to avoid any potential permanent loss in case we got a mean reversion back to the upside so in this case I'm like okay I don't want to take on any more impermanent loss at this point I'm at a 2% impermanent loss due to previous actions right so I wanted to maintain a 2% or lower impermanent loss so what was what was the plan here? So I borrow, I lent out my spot Ethereum. That way I stayed long ETH and I took out a loan to set up a USDC heavy liquidity pool to buy the dip, but also farm more yields in if that happened, right? If we got a price drawdown, which we did, we got a drawdown in price and I had multiple rebalances during this time. As I'll show you here on the school platform, Started out 2970 to 3470. Price was around 3500 at the time. So you know that the liquidity pool was 100% USDC. Price dropped into my range, started farming, generating yields, rebalanced at a price 
of around 3300, 3296, to a range of 2700 to 3619. As you can see there, continue to generate yield, getting a lot of volume. I was seeing, seeing over 100% APR on this, but that's not the point of this video. Re-ranged again, 2400 to 4000. Now, at this point, I was uncertain whether which way the market was going to go, right? And very hard to predict that. So to mitigate risk and to keep my keep price in my liquidity pool range, I decided to widen out my liquidity pool. So I would essentially buy the dip, generate more yield, and that was at a price of twenty eight seventy seven. See, we're getting we were getting close to my twenty seven hundred number. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna widen out a bit. This was my plan, but I decided to go a little bit wider to the upside reason why and also a little tighter on the downside so i went a little tighter but a little wider on the upside reason why i decided to hold more of the ethereum in case we get a mean reversion back to the upside now this is where the impermanent gain comes in because say you're buying a certain amount of ethereum on the way down and at specific price points you have an, a, a certain exposure to ethereum right now on the way up, if you don't manage the liquidity pool, if you just leave it as is and price reverts back up, you start selling off that Ethereum at those exact same price points, right? Because you didn't rebalance or you didn't do anything to the liquidity pool. Well, in this case, I set up my liquidity pool to hold more Ethereum on the way up. Now the idea here is to manage and optimize the liquidity pool. So then when price gets back to 3470, I would be at a gain in the liquidity pool that's the impermanent gain that's the impermanent gain i'm forecasting at this at this current price here where we're like at 2800 or, or whatever right so i'm a, i'm forecasting that if we get a mean reversion back to 3470 i'll be at a gain in the liquidity pool that's not even counting the yield right the yield is just the extra on top right so what you're trying what i'm trying to do is trying to capture more out of this trade right? Because I felt it was fairly low risk, but we could have went lower, right? So I'm playing both sides. I'm playing both scenarios in a way, whereas if we kept dipping lower, drawing down lower, I would still generate yield and it's all good, right? I mean, it would suck, obviously, but it's all good. I'm still generating yield and I have the long game in mind, right? And I'm waiting for that next opportunity to capitalize. But in this case, we get that mean reversion back up. As you can see, price kind of double bottomed here came back and we just been pretty much straight up for over a week right literally straight up right now actually, actually as you can see price is back to 3450 now the calculations i'm about to show you are at a price of 3430 which i did or 3440 which i did a little bit earlier today so let's go to that and then over here as you can see I actually went tighter for a, for a weekend trade, right? Usually weekends aren't as volatile and there's not a lot of price action. So I went a little tighter. I didn't do any rebalancing to rebalance this or to rearrange this, right? To get tighter. I made sure that I didn't want to like sell or buy extra Ethereum or sell off some Ethereum to get to this range. So that's the reason why I chose this range. But it gave me a boost in APRs, right? So I did that and then I set up automated rearrange because I'm at this point, I'm not selling or buying Ethereum again. So if the market had a move, I wanted to revert back to a wider range because I don't know what's going on with the market and I'm not going to force my will upon the market. I will just react to what it's showing me, right? So in this case, there was a, there was a move to the upside. My range got wider back to the original plan but i went even wider i went 2400 to 6490 right now you're probably thinking well the yields must be crap right like it's crap right it's, it's not good the way i think about it i don't make my decisions on rebalancing based on just based on aprs what i'm doing here is i'm sitting and waiting for opportunities staying wide so i'm not buying or selling too much ethereum as price oscillates but when it gets to a, a level 
or an area where I'm interested in my with my own strategy. Now you could apply your own strategy to this. If there's a level or a certain price point or however you trade or whatever time frame and you see an opportunity, then you could get aggressive with your liquidity pool, right? With minimal risk. And the beauty of it, as you wait for that opportunity, as price is oscillating inside your price range, you're just generating yields consistently, right? That's the idea. You generate yields consistently. You have that exposure. Yes, the yields might suck for a little bit, but whatever. You're still earning some money, right? You're still earning some yields while you wait. You're getting paid to wait for that opportunity. I mean, that's that's the beauty of it. And you're really not concerned about the ups and downs, right? Like, yeah, they suck when price goes down, but you're getting paid for providing that service, right? And especially during these times, a lot of people were kind of scared, were kind of scared, right? A lot of people were pulling their liquidity out of the market. What that does is it lowers the TVL, but what it does for you as an advantage, you become a larger player in the pool, which means you get a larger portion of the fees, right? So it's actually a detriment to follow the herd and pull your liquidity out trying to time the market, you're actually getting paid more to deposit your yield in there, right? So like I was saying, I was seeing over 100% APR on a $500 range, which almost 20%, right? 100% APR, which is pretty good, right? But as I got wider, the yields got lower, but I didn't see much less than 50% APR at any one time, right? So that's, that's something to think about. And it shows that the the lower liquidity allowed me to get paid more. All right, anyways, so we're going back to this here, right? So I'm in a super wide range. Now, what, what's the deal here? And I pretty much, I just left it at this range. And as price went up over time, I started seeing this momentum. I saw Bitcoin going up. I'm like, okay, well, this thing is going up, up, up. You know, maybe there's like a potential short squeeze here. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. And I'm not going to predict what's going to happen, right? But in my wide range, I'm prepared either for this to dump or for this to go up, right? So I was like, you know what? I think this is the best play. Trying to squeeze out more yields during a move like this is kind of futile. And it's very, um, what, what more could I get, right? Maybe I could get an extra 50% APR if I squeezed my ranges, but... That APR is a calculation based over the next year, right? So I would rather be more exposed to this current price action and hold as much as that Ethereum on the way up. And as you can see, we're like near, you know, my original stake price of 3470, where my range started initially. And then here are the results. So we go down here. I did an update, but I want to go here. This is the one I just posted like 39 minutes ago. So what I did was on that liquidity pool, that 30, whatever it was, 2400 to 6490, I went to Aperture Finance and set up a pre-scheduled close to remove my LP at the current ratio. I didn't sell anything. I didn't buy anything. You know, I just pulled my assets off of the liquidity pool at 3355 because I felt that as this market started accelerating to the upside, I'm like, you know what? Is that even worth farming the yields on a potential short squeeze right and that that's just the trader in me right and that's something that's totally optional you do not have to like try to time the market right but it's just like intuition uh for me because I, you know i trade the markets and i've been trading the markets for 15 years right so um i felt like that was a, just an opportunity in that sense so i'm like you know what i am better off just holding these assets instead of trying to farm the liquidity and this is an it's very important to, to understand that concentrated liquidity, even though, yeah, you could generate high APRs, it's just another tool in the tool belt. And sometimes it's not the best tool for a specific scenario. And in this scenario, it was better for me to just hodl the asset of it, you know, what I had in spot and just wait, which worked out beautifully, right? So what I did, it pulled off my liquidity at around 33.55. The spot ETH was 13.817095, which was worth 47,530 bucks, right? Plus the USDC value of 25,612, 
The total without yield was 73 without yield, right? I'm not counting, I'm not even counting the yield here. The total without the yield is $73,142. Now really let this sink in, right? At a price of $34.40, my original LP was worth 70K at $34.70. I've gained just in the LP alone $3,142. That's the impermanent gain. And now I have realized that, right? But it's very important to understand that and how it can work in the opposite direction. Now, there's got to be a catch, right? And the catch is you're more exposed to Ethereum. You got to think about the risk. Are you willing to take on the risk if price would have further drew down? Very important. And, and you balance that out, right? There's no free lunch in the markets. Right. There's no free lunch. And, you know, to, to capture, to gain this, I would have to take on a little bit more risk. And that's something that I definitely consider and implement into my plan. Right. So total without yield 73,142. My original stake price was 3470. Right. And my total, here we go. The grand total here with yield and price below 30 bucks. $75,102. That's a 7.3% ROI in just a few weeks, right? Barely a few weeks. Now, I, I go on and say this is the entire thread. It's just one trade within. It's just like a side quest, right? But I have a bigger plan here, right? There's a bigger plan at play here. But you can see exactly how that works out, right? Even though I rebalanced multiple times. I rebalanced this liquidity pool multiple times. And when it's funny when I see people on Twitter, uh, you know, other people that, you know, kind of are negative towards liquidity pools, they say, you know, this is impermanent loss. This every time you rebalance, you take on impermanent loss, blah, blah, blah. But if you understand the mechanics and ride a proper process and really follow that process and understand how it works, you could be on the opposite end of the spectrum. And not a lot of people know how to do this, right? So like I said, if you want to learn how to do this and really optimize your liquidity pools, click the links below, book a strategy session with us, and we could just talk about what you're trying to do out of the market if this is even a right fit for you, right? Because, you know, honestly, like, uh, it's not for everybody, right? And it really, it really has to be something that you are really willing to learn and, and implement into your, into your portfolio, right? And it's only a small portion of your portfolio, right? It doesn't have to be a big portion. It's just another tool that you know how to utilize in your tool belt. And just looking back, you know, hindsight is 2020, right? This market has been sideways since March. If you're sitting there hodling your assets and you're wondering, man, when is price going to go up? Your trading plan is all, it's just one dimensional. You're wasting all this time, all this opportunity here. There's an opportunity here in this range. Yes, it's sideways. Price isn't going up, but there's an opportunity here to generate income, generate yields on your holdings, right? If you're holding Bitcoin and Ethereum anyways, you might as well generate yields, right? Over the course since March, right? April, May, June, July, almost five months. In August, it will be five months. And imagine if we're still sideways. What if we're sideways the rest of the year? I'm averaging a, over 120, 130% APR on Ethereum USDC. I don't care if it stays sideways. I'll be, I'll be happy because that means I'm stacking more Ethereum at a lower cost basis. So when price eventually does make its move up, I just have a bigger bag, right? Say I, I double my stack over the next year and price hasn't gone anywhere. Right. Whereas someone that's just holding and waiting for price, it's that one dimensional strat like strategy. There's no other, there's no other plan. Right. Me, like I have multi dimensional avenues here. I could either, either price goes up. I'll be happy. Price stays sideways. I'll be happy. Price goes down. I could accumulate more Ethereum on the way down as well. Right. And stack more. So it doesn't matter. That's the opportunity here during these times here, like from February until March, that's where traders win, right? A liquidity provider is not going to win in this environment unless you're lending out the assets and borrowing it, but then you're using leverage. So you're using more risk. See, there's a trade-off there, right? More risk for reward. But 
You're wait like everybody that's holding is just waiting for this. When does it come? Who knows, man? Who knows? It could be next year. And in that meantime, you could generate yields. All right, so I'm going to end the video right there. But hopefully that's helpful. You know, like and subscribe, do all that jazz. Hit the links below and you could just a free strategy session with us, free one-on-one -on -one consultation with the know it owls and we got a really diverse group of knowledge within our group right and we can really help you and teach you how to manage your liquidity pools how to just traverse the DeFi landscape all right so feel free to click click the link below thank you again and uh hope to see you soon peace